Art enables us to find ourselves and lose ourselves at the same time. Thomas Merton For me, growing up in Newburyport was like growing up in a Norman Rockwell small town. We rode our bikes around the streets, we walked home from school, we went to the ice cream store, and we went sliding or skating at the Frog Pond. I had this deep sense that it was a special place with a meaningful architecture not really knowing that one day I would try to capture its style and significance on canvas. There are things about growing up in a small town that you can't necessarily quantify. On some level, we're all looking for meaning. And for me, living in a small New England town affords me the best opportunity to capture that meaning. It has so much to do with seeing the familiar people every day, knowing many names and most faces, the simple friendly hellos that just enrich the experience. Waking up and smelling the salt air, traveling between the handsome Federalist buildings and grabbing a simple cup of coffee where we all know the setting is being alive on many levels. I'm a painter, and I now know that if one tries to replicate his surroundings, they become more meaningful, more special to you. Drawing and painting forces you to notice the differences and the beauty of each house. A number of years ago, I started thinking about how and where and what I might do to recreate an historical view in Newbury landed upon a view of the Unitarian Church on Pleasant Street. The time period is around 1860. This was a time when you would see clipper ship sails in the river and mills along the main street. I started to do some research by going to the archival center in the Newburyport Public Library, the Historic Society of Old Newbury, and talking with local historians, particularly Joe Callahan, who grew up in Newburyport, knows more about obscure facts, such as where the plaque on the Superior Courthouse came from, and other such things. I started with a small sketch and followed with a large pen and ink on nylon, which is a wonderful drawing surface that allows you to erase, something I need to do on a regular basis, and established my viewing point, which for me was a crow's nest view, as opposed to a bird's eye view, which is much higher. This allows for more intimacy with the first subjects in the painting. The first subjects for this painting would be new reporters going off to church services by horse and carriage. I became fascinated when I discovered that there was a large mill next to the Unitarian, which had been destroyed in a large fire in 1884. It was then known as the Bartlett Mills, had been a dominant building downtown. In fact, there were two mills, one next to the church and one behind it as you look towards the water. As you stroll along Pleasant Street today, you can see the only remaining evidence of that mill, which is the brick wall on the exterior of Greta's Bakery.
Presbyterian is pretty much the same as it was in 1801 when it was built. It's simple, elegant, unpretentious Yankee architecture, pleasing to the eye in all ways. Looking into the middle ground of this painting, you'll see a wonderful architecture of the Market Square brick buildings, which are three-story Federalist structures. These buildings were all built after the fire of 1811, and according to state law at the time, had to be brick with separating firewalls. It is this law and the timing of the Federalist period of architecture that make Newburyport so unique. My second historical painting of Newburyport was from the harbor toward Pleasant Street, set in the time of 1850. I was fascinated with the harbor, the clipper ships, the wharves, and how the town looked in that day. Again, I started with much research, a detailed pen and ink, typically taking me about six months, and followed that by an oil on canvas. It's interesting to note how the water came up towards Merrimack Street, and how busy the wharves were with cargo coming and going, all housed in those beautiful three-story Federalist structures. My third historical painting was of Market Square, set in 1870, around the holiday season. I had three special models, my daughters, for the carolers and violinists in the square. For my fourth painting, I chose a view of Upper Green Street and beyond, around 1880, depicting the Superior Courthouse the Immaculate Conception Church with the original spire, and the Theophilus Parsons House where John Quincy Adams studied law. Drawing portraits pulls out the beauty in faces, just as drawing the town brings out the beauty of the buildings, and the town is composed of both. The faces come, they change, they go. The homes and buildings continue. But it's important to acknowledge that the buildings lack meaning without the people, these faces. I think there should be a fundamental humility toward place, an acknowledgement that we are here temporarily, able to contribute much, and sometimes capable of defacing much. If we think of ourselves as caretakers of the treasures around us, we can approach all with an appreciative mindset. I don't think I'm exaggerating my feeling when I say that I feel one with the buildings. They reflect who I am after 60 years of living with them. When I render the houses, I learn more about them and they help me to appreciate the place ever deeper. In a word, the meaning of my local life becomes richer. I am thinking that painting resides in the heart. When I draw or paint, I often go out into the streets, mix with the buildings and the people, and together it becomes an artistic experience. It is for me a joy, and if you can find a place inside where there's joy, 
the joy will generally just wash away your worries.